Hi, I'm G and this is my art channel and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I painted an orchid in watercolour using a single colour and in real time. And this is part one, this is me showing you how I did the background. So the first thing that I did was draw it out on 300 GSM watercolour paper and there's a link below showing you how I drew it out in a previous video. Then what I did was take a colour image and change it into grayscale because I'm only working in a single colour so this would help me see all the tones and the shades a lot more easily. And with all of that done, I can finally start painting. So I start using a size 6 round brush, a Winsor & Newton sable brush, and I'm just filling in the background to begin with. And I said I was just using a single colour, and I am just using my colour of choice, Winsor Violet Dioxazine. So I start in the top corner, and it looks as though I'm going to start working uh, the background around in a sort of clockwise, you know, paint it in the top corner and then work around clockwise. But for some reason, I decide that I'm going to go anti-clockwise. Um, I'm not sure why I decided to do this, because I'm right-handed, but it's just one of those strange artistic decisions that you can sometimes make on the day. And it's also at this point that I realized that I've still got the pencil frame showing, the pencil drawing frame that is showing. And I always try and rub that out when I'm doing a piece of work, because if I end up framing this at the end, I don't want a pencil line showing just inside the frame of whatever mount card I use. So I quickly decided to go back in there and rub that pencil line out as best as I can. So as I said, I start working then in a weird clockwise kind of direction. And what I'm doing here is I've got a palette off shot here, a ceramic palette, and I'm mixing the violet uh, dioxazine in the palette, you know, to the kind of uh, consistency I want, whether it's going to be really dark, so not a lot of water, or whether I want it at the moment, as you can see, quite fluid, sort of a mid-tone with the, this kind of violet. So I'm adding a bit more water to it in the palette before I then transfer it over using the brush. And since this is the background and I really want the flower to really jump off the page and stand out, I'm doing the background in a deliberately very, very fluid kind of wet into wet kind of way. So all the way around here, you'll see me just putting on paint and, uh, and water, mixing them together and allowing them to blend, allowing them to mix where I've got kind of fuzzier edges like you see here. I'm just whacking in a big fat dark bit of violet and then letting it sort of flood outwards and run into the colors around it. Yeah, manipulating it a little bit with a brush as well to kind of make it go where I want it to go. There you can see I'm just using guidelines from the drawing to make sure that I get those kind of shadowy areas in the right spot. Uh, but I'm letting it flood into each other. So it's going to be very, very fuzzy, very, very blurred and diffuse in the background, which hopefully will make the flower really, really stand out when I do it because I'm going to go for real, real sharp edges, really crisp edges. So I've got a bit too much paint on here that I think it's too dark. So I just go in with a dry brush. So what I've done with the brush is I've dabbed it on a bit of tissue paper that I got right next to me to get the color off and to get it as dry as possible. And then I'm just popping it on there and sweeping it around to kind of lift up some of that color that was there. And now I'm going back into a big fat splodge of dark violet because you can see from the photo that I've got next door to the, the drawing and the painting here, you know, how dark some of those dark green shadows in the background are going to be. And since I'm only using a single color, then I've got to just make sure that I use a lot of quite um, saturated violet at this stage in order to kind of stand in for those darker greens that are in the background. Uh, and if I need it to be lighter, I know I can just dip the brush in a bit of water there add it in here, just blend it in back and forth. You know, I can go from dark to light quite simply, quite easily. Uh, and I think one of the reasons I decided to use a uh, size six brush in the background here is because it's a bigger brush and it would kind of force me to be less fussy, uh, hopefully. <laughs> and also, you know, so it would be a, a kind of a bigger, bolder, big brush kind of background. Um, whereas I'll probably move towards using a much smaller size three when I start doing the delicate uh, parts of the flower and the sort of smaller parts of the flower. Also, another reason for using the, the bigger brush was I thought it would allow me to do it quickly. I was very aware the whole time of doing this painting that I was doing a real-time painting where I couldn't really speed it up or mess with it in any way. So I knew that I was going to have to work quicker. Uh, and I thought that using a big brush in the background would allow me to cover a larger area much more quickly uh, and therefore save a bit of time. So at the moment you can see me working on these areas that are kind of like mid-tone to dark tone in the background. And I think you can see what I usually do here is work with a mid base. So I'm working with a mid-tone base um, that's, you know, obviously darker than light, but not too dark. But then when I need to make it dark, I can just dip my brush into the violet dioxazine while the paint is still wet. And I just plonk in some of that darker, you know, stronger, undiluted color 
on top of the mid-tone bass that I'm using and it kind of spreads outwards and it can make you know a sort of dark to light effect. So instead of going in super dark straight away, I'm still being cautious. I'm starting with my mid-tones, but I know that because they're wet, I can plonk a bit of darker paint on them straight away and make them darker where I need them to be. And of course the opposite is true and I can go the other way with this because if I start with a mid-tone then I can add clean water in and work that around to make it go from mid-tone to light tone. One of the things I loved about doing the background here is because I was able to work in this super expressive way, dropping these colors in, letting these colors run about, moving them around with the brush a little bit to try and control them, but it's watercolor, so there's only so much control that you can do. But I really love that kind of really expressive approach to this, and I kind of, I, I think I made the most of it because I knew that I would not be working this way when I was working on the actual flower itself. So because this bit is still wet, all I need to do is drop a couple of big blobs of violet dioxazine into the background here and it just spreads outwards gradually. Okay, and now I'm back up in the top right hand corner, just having a little tweak of that bit that I'd already done. I thought it was a bit too diffuse, a bit too fuzzy, since you can see in the photo that it's, it's clearly one of the stalks from uh, the flower. So I thought I wanted to make that a little bit stronger edged. So I put in a little bit more dark here, uh, dark paint, and then I'm getting some light water on the brush, and then I'm just kind of blending them in a little bit. So they're still gonna be diffuse, but they're gonna have a slightly stronger edge uh, than they did when I'd done them previously. So after that bit, I'd stopped and I'd let the picture dry and I'm just pointing out the areas I'm going to tackle next. So some light flowers, but also this other dark bit of green background that obviously I've got to do purple. And this was one of the main, main challenges uh, of the piece of work. It was because I was only using a single color. I knew what I had to do was try and get my tones uh, of that kind of uh, purple, that violet, uh, you know, as, as accurate as possible in terms of, you know, darks and lights. Otherwise, this really kind of faint, translucent, delicate looking flower was not going to work. It wasn't going to work. Uh, so I really had to try and make sure that when I was working my tones, I tried to mix a really good range of them and get them dark where they were supposed to be dark, then medium and then light or even paper white where they were highlighted. So as I'm painting this background bit here, I'm using color from a palette. So I've mixed uh, this violet dioxazine in a palette at this particular kind of strength of color. And that's what the palette allows me to do, get a really even field of color here without too much variation. If I was working the way I'd normally work, which is to kind of mix the colors on the paper as I go along, I would have ended up with a much more uneven background. Could be really interesting, could look really, really good, but that's not really what I wanted. I wanted the background to you know, have kind of even but fuzzy kind of fields of color uh, before I moved on to actually doing the petals and the flower itself. And here you can see me begin to tidy up some of the edges of this um, other flower that you can see in the bottom right corner. And even though I'm using a size six round brush, it's got a lovely fine tip on the end there that allows you to do, if you really wanted to, quite a bit of kind of uh, detailed uh, fine work with it. So here I am doing another one of the flowers. There's this nice kind of diagonal to the flowers, the orchids in this picture. They start in that top left-hand corner. Then you get the main one, the big one that is the detailed one, the focus of the picture. But then also leading down into the bottom right-hand corner, you've also got this link of all these other orchids that were in the photograph. So it's got this nice sort of diagonal flow from left down to right. Uh, and I'm doing those flowers as well. And again, trying to get them as pale and as light uh, as I can. And it is a tricky kind of balancing act of making sure that you use enough water but not too much. And this is where um, having converted the color image that you can see there into grayscale and the one that I was working from when I was doing the painting, that's where it comes into its own and that's where it's so helpful here because I'm seeing everything on a another iPad that I've sat up in front of me in shades of greys and whites and blacks and so on. So I can really gauge, you know, how much that yellow that you can see in, in the picture on that flower there, I can gauge how, you know, kind of purple that's got to be, how much violet that's got to be so much more easily. Um, and you might think it's a bit of, you know, um, cheating, a little bit of a cop out to work from a grayscale picture instead of the color one that we've got next to you. But if I was working in color, obviously I wouldn't even bother with the grayscale picture, but knowing that I'm working with one color and I've got to do shades from dark to light of this one color, almost like you would if you were doing a pencil drawing, then converting a picture into grayscale, I think is just a really smart way of, you know, uh, making it a bit easier on yourself to see all the different tones uh, a lot more easily in just that one color. 
let me know in the comments below whether you think that's a bit of a cop out or a cheat or you think it's smart. Um, here you can see me going to do the bottom right hand um, flower. So what I do is I just turn the camera around a little bit here because I want to do this a little bit more of a close up so you can see some of the brushwork and also some of the paint because I don't know how you feel but when I'm watching a YouTube video I love it when they show the paint and the, the brushwork in super duper close up. Uh, I just love seeing that kind of thing, you know, all the colors moving around and everything. And you've already seen the picture that I'm working from for most of this video here. So you got a good idea of the orchid that I'm working on in the background and how it's supposed to look. So I didn't feel at this point that there was a need for a comparison of the photos. I just thought I'd show you some of the paint work that's going on. So you get to see me using a bit of dry brushing here because I put on a bit too much um, paint and it's looking a bit too dark a purple. Um, so I've just taken the brush, washed it, whacked it on a bit of tissue paper straight away so it's like dry and I use it to suck up some of that dark paint which is giving me that lighter streak that you've seen there. Now with the top section I'm just working with a little bit of um, light color and I'm working that upwards towards the edge and the edge of this petal you know I'm working with am I going to make it as light as possible I'm gonna, am I going to leave it as a white highlight you know paper white highlight but I decided to not do that with most of the background stuff I wanted to make sure that if I was going to leave paper white highlights I was going to do that as much as possible on the main focus of the flower what I'm going to um, tackle showing you in part two of this series of videos I wanted that to have paper white highlights I didn't really want too many paper white highlights on anything else in the background purely because I thought it would detract your view it would distract you to look at those things rather than the main focus of the picture now I am still using the size 6 at the moment here as you can see me dropping in water, running it back and also dropping in colour while it's still wet. But I was finding that a size 6 brush was getting a little bit um, tight and restrictive as I was working in a slightly smaller area here. So I decided that what I was going to do after doing this petal, I was going to switch it up uh, and start using a thinner brush. So one that's you know half thin, uh, half thickness again, it's like a size 3 round and as you can see it's a much finer point uh, and this allows me to, you know, do some little little detail bits. So you can see me going along the edge of that bit that I did earlier with a bit of just clean water, no paint on the brush here, and I'm just rubbing it back and forth to try and remove what I thought was quite a hard edge of color and to, to make it a bit more soft, a bit more diffuse. Now this flower in the bottom right hand corner is much more curled up. It hasn't fully opened out its petals yet like the main focus flower has. So they're, they're quite tight, they're quite, quite closed and of course there's a lot more shadow there. So what I'm working with here on each of these petals is pretty much a very very basic kind of dark to light effect on each one because it just appears that way in the photograph. It's very very dark along one edge and it's, as it's gradually opening outwards it's catching more light, it's getting paler. So I've just got to make sure that it starts off nice and dark as you can see most of those edges do and then works towards light uh, and this one here that I'm doing right now curled up and over it's one of the outer petals so I'm starting really really dark uh, with my color here going up gently against those edges luckily they're already dry so there shouldn't be any flooding any bleeding of the colors uh, and I'm just flicking some strokes upwards here because this bit goes from dark to light quite quickly uh, a little bit starkly but what I'm going to do is use a bit of clean water and a little bit of lighter paint here to just blend out that stark change between dark and light. So again, wash my brush again, get some uh, clean water on there and just work it a bit back and forth, back into the color, then drop a bit more dark at the end and work that upwards because it's all still wet. It should all sort of gently run together uh, without too much of a very, very hard drying line, apart from where I've deliberately left that bit right in the middle you know, where you can see it's a white highlight a little bit there, that I've deliberately left as a drying line because it was a sort of a bit of kind of crease in the petal that was catching the light. So I've just left that as it was. Don't mind about that drying line. So I'm actually getting close to the end of having done the background here. So I'm, I'm doing a couple little tweaks here, just filling in this little bit with a bit of light color in between those two petals before I start working on this last petal. And this one is the underneath petal. Um, so that big one that I painted previously, it's quite dark there, that was curving up and over. So this is the kind of underneath of that section. So again, I'm putting on what is a, a basic mid-tone of violet to start with, and I'm working that gently with the brush in between this little gap here, slightly overlapping here. So I 
have to use a slight rough and ready wipe of the thumb to get rid of that color that was overlapping. Uh, and I'm just going dark to light. So I start to add a little bit of lighter um, paint and water here. And I'm just blending that, you know, back and forth uh, so I can get a nice gradual change from that kind of mid-tone down there where I started up towards the edge of the frame here where I want it to be lighter. So it's still one of those petals that is going from dark to light, but I've also got to try and put in some marks to make it look curved uh, in a minute. So I'm thinking about how I'm going to do that while I'm just getting the paint job right here. And uh, I decide that the mid-tone that I start with is not quite dark enough, so I need to plonk a little bit more dark color in here and start working that you know, back outwards towards uh, what is, looks like the top of the paper for you, but this is actually the bottom right that I'm working on. I'm trying to be quite careful here um, because I realize that I'm working wet into wet as it is, but it could dry quicker than I anticipate on me. And that's going to give me a kind of weird drying line, which is going to kind of ruin the effects of what I'm trying to get here. So I'm working fairly quickly to try and blend these colors together while they're wet uh, in order to stop getting any drying lines. And I am still a little bit worried about that middle section from the bit where I've just been working on where it meets the light, whether that could get a bit too much of a strong line and, and not a gradual change. So as I'm dropping in more colors here, I'm being a bit too fussy, to be honest with you, and I'm not worrying enough about that middle bit of this petal where it, it clearly changes from medium to dark, sorry, medium to light quite quickly. So how am I going to show that this petal is curving over underneath? Well, luckily in the photo, you can see some very faint kind of grayish lines um, showing the direction and also a curve for this underneath of the, the leaf. Almost the same kind of lines that you get underneath a mushroom. If you ever pick up a mushroom and look at the kind of gills that it's got underneath, you know, when you see those drawn from the side, they kind of can curve outwards. And, and you know, you've got this idea that the, the mushroom is sort of curved underneath. So that's what I'm trying to do with these very faint lines. And that's why I'm doing them so faintly. So if they don't quite work and it doesn't quite look good, then when it dries, um, they shouldn't really show up at all. But also I was trying to do them quite subtly because yes, they were kind of lines that were showing the curve of the flower, but they are also on a flower that's got very white and pale petals. So what I didn't want to do was have them be too strong and to basically distract you from the edge of the petal, the overall shape of each of the petals. So there's the drying line that I wanted to avoid. <laughs> that sort of very thin part of this petal, that middle channel there, that really thin bit, um, I was getting a bit of a drying line there between wet and dry paint. So what I have to do now is work down into this section I've already painted and get some water and color on there and reactivate it and work it around a little bit with the brush so that it is a much more gradual and even blend between the dark through the middle bit to that bit where I've just done those curved lines because otherwise I had that drying line that was really going to kind of niggle and annoy me. And here you're getting to see over fussy artist in action. You know that bit when you should just leave it and stop? No, I've, I've clearly gone beyond that point. And I just keep working this little bit and adding a bit more color in and sort of like fiddling with it a little bit and adding, oh. And really it looked fine before and I don't know why I'm doing that. I've just got into a kind of a zone of being too fussy. And this bit here, you can see me, I'm dry brushing down to just make this little bit lighter uh, just around this edge. Yeah, so a dry brush picking up some of that paint. But no real reason for me to do it. It shouldn't be working in the border there. I don't know why I'm working in the border at all. Just being too fussy. So, you know, I've got to remember that, not to do that in future. And it's a lesson to everybody out there. When it feels like it's done, just leave it. <laughs> don't keep mucking about with it. Because it's highly likely you'll just end up streaking it and not making it look very good. But luckily I decided to stop. So here you go, you can see the background, finished background painted next to the flower, next to the photograph. Uh, and this was real time painting and also single color. So let me know in the comments below what you think about the background, the painting, the video itself, whether you like real time or not. Uh, and also subscribe to make sure you don't miss the next episode, episode two, where I'll be painting the actual focal point of the picture, the orchid flower. And here you can see a little sneak peek. Uh, of me just getting to grips with that and if you subscribe and you make sure you see the next episode you'll see how I tackle that and all the techniques that I use to do it. Thanks for watching.